Hello, in this video I want to talk about the importance of matching the propeller to the engine and, uh, and to the aircraft. And we're going to begin by just a quick having a quick review of drag. So we know there are two types of drag. There's profile drag and there's lift induced drag. And we can say that the coefficient of drag is made up of the profile drag and this lift induced drag. Uh, multiply by some constant and this constant is dependent upon uh, the aspect ratio and Oswald's efficiency factor how efficient the wing is effectively all right so the drag produced by the aircraft is half rho v squared s coefficient of drag and then if we substitute substitute in uh, cd0 and kcl squared for cd we can get an expression here for for the drag now, lift is also equal to half rho v squared s coefficient of lift. In steady state flight, lift is equal to weight. So therefore, the weight is equal to half rho v squared s coefficient of lift. And then if we rearrange that, we can get a value for the coefficient of, of lift. And then if I square that, I have a, a value for the coefficient of lift squared. So I'm going to take this. Uh, equation and substitute it in here for CL squared. Okay, so when I do that and I put it in, uh, that's what I have. And then when we multiply that out, the half rho v squared s, they all uh, cancel off here. And that is my uh, expression for drag. If I take that uh, equation and then differentiate it with respect to V. And then I set that equal to uh, zero to get the, the turning point or the minimum point. And then if I solve for V, I will get the velocity of minimum drag. Okay. Now, um, for the Cessna 152, uh, I got the figure for K and CD0 from a book. And unfortunately, I can't remember the book. It's over 10 years ago since I read it. Um, but I think it is Aircraft Performance by John Anderson. But I'm not 100% sure on that. Anyway, uh, this is the value for K, CD0. The weight of the aircraft, well, max all up mass is 757 kgs so that equates to approximately 7400 newtons we'll take density at sea level value the wing area is 14.86 meters squared the engine uh, is 82 kilowatts with a max rpm of 2550 rpm and the propeller is a fixed pitch propeller where the diameter is 69 inches or 1.753 meters Okay, so if I take uh, these values and put them in to this equation, I will get a, a velocity of minimum drag of 32 meters per second or 63 knots. So then if I plot, if I just go back a slide, if I plot drag, so this is the drag equation, if I plot drag against velocity, you know, so if I varied velocity between say five meters per second and on up. If I plot that on a graph, I get something like this. And we can see here that the minimum uh, drag happens at about 63 uh, knots, which is what we got here, 63 knots. Okay, um, then if we look at power, well, Trust is equal to drag in in um, steady state flight, and power is trust times velocity, which is the same as drag times uh, velocity. So if I multiply this by v, you know v squared becomes v cubed. V squared here just becomes v. And then if I differentiate that with respect to v to get the minimum power, and then if I just solve for v. I will get the velocity of minimum power is equal to 
k over 3 cd0 to the power of a quarter uh, square root of 2 w rho s and when i put the values of k and cd0 and rho and s in here i would get the velocity of minimum power to be 24 meters per second or or 48 knots so once again if i plot power against velocity using all these values here i will get a graph in red here and there is the, um, the velocity of minimum power okay so we can see that the two graphs intersect at this point here which is 81 82 two knots so we saw that velocity of minimum drag was k over cd0 to the power of a quarter times this expression and velocity of minimum power is k over 3 cd0 to the quarter of the square root of 2 w rho s okay there is another velocity and that's the velocity of maximum range and for a propeller aircraft uh, that is 3k over cd0 to the power of a quarter so you, you can see here is k over cd0 k over 3 cd0 and this is now 3k over cd0 all right and when i put the the figures in uh, for that i get 82 knots so this equation here comes from the Breguet range equation and um, just deriving that was just too long for this for this video but i hope i've, I've just shown you, you know, the the similarity of the of the formulae Okay, so there's our, our 82, uh, 82 knots. Okay, so if I take that uh, 82 knots or 42 meters per second and put it back into my power equation, I will get, um, so instead of V now, I'm gonna put in 42 and rho and a CD zero and they're all over here. Uh, that multiplies out to be uh, 39.2 kilowatts and the engine had a power a max power of 82 kilowatts so we're saying that's roughly 47 uh, 47 percent of power okay so if i go to the cessna 152 pilot operating handbook and there is a version of this online i'm not saying that this is the most up-to-date version it's just a version i found uh, we found that uh when the engine fails in flight the glide speed is 60 knots so that will be uh, velocity and minimum drag so we calculated uh, 63 knots which is which is ballpark and also from the pilot operating handbook the cruise performance they're saying at 2000 feet was 47 percent um, power and that was 82 knots so we did it at sea level and we got 47 percent at 82 knots i think it was so again ballpark figure um happy enough with with those and compliments to the person who came up with the values of k and cd0 okay when i look at the uh the pilot operating handbook again you see that the maximum range occurs at I think that's 45% power at sea level. And that's about uh, 77 knots. So everything indicates that the value I calculated of 47% at 82 knots is, is a ballpark ballpark figure. And it gives me a degree of confidence in the, in the numbers. Okay, <clears throat> so um, at that setting, so we're going to say, 47 percent at 82 knots let's say or 80 knots 2000 rpm the propeller um pitch is measured at the 70 75 percent cord length so the rotational speed at rotational velocity at that um point is omega r so that's 2000 rpm divided by 60 multiplied by 2 pi and then we're getting 75 percent of the propeller uh, radius and that works out to be 137 meters per second and this 80 knots or 82 knots you know it's approximately 
40 meters per second. So if I use those figures, I would get uh, the angle of advance here is the inverse tan of 40 over 137, and that gives me approximately 16 degrees. Okay, when I looked up the propeller data sheet, so the propeller was a Macaulay 1A103, TCM 6958. This 69 refers to the diameter in inches, and this refers to the, the pitch at the 75% radius. So 58 inches is 1.473. So what this is telling me that when the propeller rotates one full revolution, it should go forward 1.473 uh, meters. Okay, one full revolution is 2 pi r, so 2 pi and r is uh, the radius of the propeller at the 75% point, and that is 4.128 meters. And when I work out the blade angle then, that works out to be, you know, approximately 20 degrees. So, um, we got the blade angle to be approximately 20, so it was 19.6. We got the angle of attack to be 16, and that gave me, sorry, angle of advance to be 16, and that gives me an angle of attack of, of 3.6 degrees. And that's typically uh, where we'd want to be. Uh, if I go to uh, any propeller air file, so this is a Clark Y section, which I know is an older type profile you can see that the maximum lift to drag at a number of different reynolds numbers is about yeah you know, i just say that's four degrees yeah somewhere around four degrees okay so that's where you want your propeller to be uh, to be operating on and this is the whole point uh, of this video actually it's to show you know that at the velocity for a maximum range that the engine is going at a particular rpm and that the um, blade angle then is at, at the correct uh, angle to give us the maximum lift to drag ratio for that propeller airfoil okay so uh, just to conclude then um, we have a blade angle and we have an angle of advance so we can calculate the geometric pitch well, we already were told that that was 58 inches, which is 1.473 meters. And the effective pitch is 2 pi r, so this is at that 75% radius, tan of 16 degrees, this angle here, that works out to be 1.183. So the slip then is the geometric pitch minus the effective pitch all over the geometric pitch, and that works out to be uh, 20%. So we're saying that the propeller is about 80% efficient. The advance ratio is V over ND, so we said the velocity was 80 so, uh, knots, which is about 40 meters per second. Um, the RPM was 2000 RPM, so the N is 2000 divided by 60, so that's revs per second, and the diameter is 1.753. That gives me an advance ratio of 0.68. Previous videos, I spoke about uh, an equation for the efficiency of the propeller, um, and that, that's it there. So I'm saying in this case, the efficiency was 80%, the advance ratio was 0.68, which gave me a coefficient of thrust to a coefficient of torque of 7.4, which I thought was probably a bit low. But maybe if somebody else is more knowledgeable in this area, they uh, they might say so in the comments. Okay, uh, this graph here just shows the benefit of using a, a variable pitch propeller. So with a variable pitch propeller, you can set the RPM or whatever the optimum RPM is, and then the propeller will change blade angle to keep the RPM at that constant RPM, and therefore we maximize efficiency over a a wide range of advanced ratios. Okay, so that concludes the video. I hope you found it useful.